A number of people worked in housing from a background, in social housing, local authority, housing associations, and just generally they were picking up in discussion with some of their colleagues, their neighbours, their friends, that it was really difficult to get onto a housing association or the local authorities' waiting list. And in particular, there seemed to be a big issue with the elders and older people getting access to what's known as sheltered accommodation. It's a particular type of property for people over the age of 60. And so um, we had an organisation at that time called the Community Relations Council. And so um, they took their concerns to the Community Relations Council, who in turn um, got in touch with the, um, the CR, uh, CRE, uh, which is the uh, Race Equality Council, actually, uh, nationally. And they actually came down and did an investigation into the social housing and access to social housing. And what they found was that actually there was direct discrimination occurring for black people in access and housing. And they actually served a non-discrimination notice on the Liverpool City Council, which said, you've got to stop being racist and stop utilising racist housing policies. And that also implicated the housing associations, because housing associations used to have a waiting list and offer 50% of their properties to the local authority. So by using the same system, they were perpetuating the discrimination it was registered as Liverpool Ace Housing Association. You're going to say, why change the name? Why move from Liverpool Ace? And that really was done because the board of the time, the management committee of Liverpool Ace Housing Association, absolutely um, understood and empathised and sympathised and, and wanted to campaign against the apartheid system that was going on in South Africa. They, they knew it, they understood it, Liverpool had links with South Africa and certainly with the ANC and the anti-apartheid campaigns that were going on and they kind of understood it from the point of view of the racism that was occurring here in Liverpool. So they could identify with the struggle that was going on with South Africa, the campaign against the apartheid system, but also there was a campaign that was going on here about racism too. And so people knew about Steve Biko, they knew about Nelson Mandela, um, and actually um, the director at the time, his name was Ray Corliss, and the chairperson, his name was Morris Freeman, they went out to South Africa through their links with the ANC and mess up with Mrs. Biko. And they asked Mrs. Biko's permission to use Steve Biko's name in the naming of our organisation. And she gave permission, we're, we're thankful for that, um, and uh, she gave permission for us to use the name Steve Biko Housing Association. And she actually um, came to Liverpool, first time she left South Africa was to come here to Liverpool and to open, officially open our first sheltered scheme, Hector Pieces and Course. That was in 1992. When you think back to the late 70s and early 80s, the type of problems that was going on with the housing, um, and that was in the backdrop of really poor housing conditions. So the properties needed improving. So they were really in poor disrepair. Not all of them, but quite a lot of them were in poor disrepair. There was a lot of private landlords who neglected the property. There were some people that actually their accommodation was no longer fit for them or it was too big for them or they couldn't manage the stairs. So hence the sheltered accommodation, having smaller accommodation, lifts to get upstairs if they needed it, um, and bungalow type accommodation. And there was also, um, there was still that issue around access to housing. So what had been going on in Liverpool was quite um, symptomatic of what had gone in the, in the country really, was that um, the, the houses were seen to be unfit. The local authority declared um, compulsory purchase orders on them. So they bought off um, people to say, your house is no longer fit and um, we're going to clear these, these areas and we'll build new estates on the outskirts of Liverpool and you can move to these nice new 
houses that have got inside toilets and nice bathrooms and central heating systems and gardens. And actually what happened was that um, at that time there was a, a lot of black people actually owned their own property. And through this compulsory purchase order they were actually disenfranchised because what they got told was your property is in disrepair, it's not worth a lot of money, we'll give you so much money. But they couldn't go and buy another property with it, it wasn't enough. Um, so they ended up becoming renters. And um, a lot of people felt um, really aggrieved by that whole process, but a lot of people, um, particularly the African community, um, uh, were, were dispossessed really of their property. So I know my own grandfather was from Nigeria, and I know he came in the 1920s as a seaman, like a lot of um, people that came to this country were seamen, and he, he owned the property, he saved up, and how they would afford was that somebody would buy the property and they'd rent to their friends or their other colleague seamen, and then they in turn would eventually save up and they'd buy their property. So there's a lot of seamen owned their own properties, but through the CPO, system actually were disenfranchised and lost the property and actually lost their property to pass down to their children and to their families. Okay, so 30 years down the line, we're really proud to still be here because that's a feast in itself. We're, 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 still a, we're a small association, we're a community-based housing association and we are still a BME housing association, really important to us. We're very proud and we will say out quite loud that we are a BME housing association. But do we discriminate? No. Our homes are open to everybody. But, but what we do is actually we um, market our properties to BME communities. So we, we, we go where the BME people are and we we, you know, and, and, and in fact, I say we go to where BME people are, people come to us because they know us, they trust us, we're a good landlord. But more than just being a landlord and a housing association, we are a community-based BME housing association. So we're very active in our community and we work and support with lots of community organisations, particularly targeting uh, the BME communities. And when I talk about BME, initially when we started off, we were an Afro-Caribbean organisation, um, but we very quickly moved beyond just being a BME because our city is very diverse. We have new communities coming into Liverpool all the time and actually our communities expand. And so we take anybody really and try and prioritise people from a black and ethnic minority background, whether that's African, Asian, uh, Yemeni, uh, Eastern European, our, our spread is, is large, but we're still, um, you know, 65% of our properties are targeted to people uh, from a, a, an ethnic background. I think um, we play a really important role in this community and we see um, we take that responsibility seriously um, and we see it as, a, as not just our responsibility, it's all the community's responsibility, but we step up to the place as well, first and foremost. And what can we do around it? Um, for, for a long time, unfortunately, um, what we see is gun crime um, and g gangs, knives, culture that's growing in our city not just in our community, I want to say this isn't just our community thing, this is an issue that's happened up and down the country, Liverpool's no different uh, and unfortunately our community's being impacted upon that too. Um, drugs can, can fuel this, you know, let's be honest. Um, and I think how we play a part is that we try and show our young people that there's an alternative. And I guess there's two ways that we that we play that part. One is by organising and campaigning and doing things like supporting the march. Um, what we did there was we facilitated the march and we helped our community to come together as part of that healing process and a part of something positive that we could do as a community to show as a community we're together um, killing young boys, having guns and killing other young boys is unacceptable as a community and that was what that march was about. It was also about a plea for the killers um, to hand themselves in or for people who know to come forward. Um, but beyond that, what we do is work with our youth organisations. So for example, we've just completed a six week co course called Open Minds Project, and that was um, targeting young people aged 16 to 20 to show them that the 
uh, are options out there for their future. So some people young leave school and don't know what I'm going to do. And what we were doing was saying, actually, look, there are lots of opportunities that are available. And we had people that came in to talk to young people about career choices, but also a bit wider than that. So we had somebody from the West Bank come in to talk about finance, to talk about how, how to open up a bank account. Do you know there was a lot of young people there didn't even know what a, a current account was or how to get a bank card or what, what the different types of loan and interest rates are and what it all meant or understand finance just generally. So, you know, the, the, these are young people who, who come out of school that are ill-equipped really to, to carry on just in day-to-day -day life. So we try to put those um, things and give them that knowledge and spread that knowledge. And we think it's important for us to, um, to do that, but to work with our community organisations such as the Unity um, uh, Youth Club, such as the Tiber Project and the Methodist um, a lot of, you know, and we, and we work with them to do that and we will continue to do it. It's important. Um, the ethnic minorities generally are going to be a, a more likely to be the victims of crime than the perpetrators of crime. But that's not go, going away from, unfortunately, that some of our young black kids do get into crime. And sometimes that's about choices. Um, sometimes that's about, you know, getting into the, a wrong group, a wrong crowd. Um, and the law of money. So some people think I'm blocked from access. Um, I've been told I'll never get a job because of discrimination. My parents have never got a job and so I don't think I'm going to be able to get a job. So the only way I'm going to get some money to be able to buy myself the trainers and the clothes or whatever is if I turn to crime. Um, and what, what we need to do is to show those young people that actually there are alternatives to crime. And I wouldn't like to say that all young people go to crime because that's just wrong because one of the other things that we do is every year and we're in our fifth year now of having the young black achievers awards ceremony and we do that in october during black history month and we recognize young people who've um, achieved uh, a levels degrees, master's degrees, have gone on to get jobs, and we recognise that. And also, it's not just the academic, it's people who may have got MVQs, um, and we have somebody to come in and talk to those young people, and we have a, a discussion, and we have food, we have entertainment. Um, last year, we had 25 young black kids who'd got A levels in a, and passed A grades in maths, in sciences. Uh, we had a, a, a young woman who just um, uh, got her pupillage to be a barrister, so she'd done a degree, law degree, she'd done her bar course, um, and she'd just been accepted into a pupillage. We had other kids who were going to uh, Cambridge University. They're the stories we don't hear, but they're our local kids who are doing fantastic things. We had Bianca Walkden, um, she's now a double taekwondo champion she, she won gold at the Olympics um, and she came to show her, uh, her medal and talk about her story. She told how she went, when she used to go to school, she used to buy sweets from the shop and go to school to sell the sweets to the kids to get money to pay for her lessons, unknown to her parents. Her parents didn't know this was happening. But I guess she was an ordinary kid who went to a school and was showing there was an alternative and look, I got into sports and I'm a, a gold um, medal winner in the Olympics and what a fantastic story that was so and we had the discussion with those young people about crime about gun crime and we had a fantastic day but it was um, really positive we ho hosted it put it on but it was young people that facilitated it and joined in the discussions and celebrated their success it was fantastic for me it's hard and I understand it's hard they might not earn the same money as that they would get on the street, but what they will have is peace of mind and they'll have career. They'll have their safety. Um, and I, my advice is please turn your back on that lifestyle. Go into something positive. There's lots of people out there that will help you. We're there to help you. We can signpost. Um, there's lots of organisations that will help young people, whether they're, they're boys or girls, men or women. Um, we will help them. Uh, just please think that there is an alternative and people will actually believe in you and support you and give you that chance and that opportunity. Come to us, there is a different path. So our, our aspirations are 
um, not only to survive, because I think a lot of community organisations are battling to survive in this current climate, um, we, we will survive, our business plan ensures that we will survive, so we're very confident in that. But we don't only just want to survive, our, our plans are that we will continue to grow. It will be at a slow, steady pace, but we will continue to grow. We will continue to provide services to others, so for example, we support other smaller housing organisations, so we're supporting the community, Granby Community Land Trust. Um, we're supporting the um, Come Home project, which is a project that's very new and innovative that's happening in the Anfield area of Liverpool, but we're supporting that project. And we will continue to support our community organisations, including our elders and particularly our youth and working with our, our young people and supporting them. Um, making an impact on their lives 